Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question for you related to the metabolic and endocrine systems. So on test day, you can expect a good handful of questions related to the metabolic and endocrine systems, uh, somewhere between four and six questions total with two or three items each from the foundations for differential diagnosis or the interventions making for the grand total of four to six questions in the metabolic and endocrine systems. This is all according to the newest outline, the FSBPT content outline. So as you know, as we go through this podcast, we go through each section on the FSBPT content outline. This is representative of what you will experience on test today. So as per usual, I recommend that you study proportionally, meaning that the big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro, they should account for most of your studies with all of these other systems and non-systems taking up the balance or the rest of your time. So as uh, just general advice, make sure you're studying very proportionally. All right, so we do have a practice question for you, but just before we get to that, just a quick reminder, if you haven't yet, uh, please be sure to sign up for the email list over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. That's where you can get all of the, our latest updates, course offerings, as well as some fun cheat sheets, tips, and tricks. I think you'll enjoy that as you prepare for test day. All right, so this this system, the, well, I guess these systems, the metabolic and endocrine systems, they tend to be a bit vexing just because they are so vast. And so I've got a practice question that hopefully will encompass a few of these topics, which will be beneficial to you so that on test day, you're not not thrown off by anything that maybe you haven't heard of or seen in quite a while. And let's be honest, on test day, that, that experience will happen. You will encounter questions or concepts that maybe you haven't thought about or looked at, or maybe you know that they exist, but you haven't thought about it in a while. So that's where going through these practice questions can be so helpful, is to prompt your memory, hopefully make it so that it sticks a bit more long-term, so that as you head into test day, you'll be able to identify and find that correct answer. All right, so we'll go ahead and go on with our question. As per usual, I will read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. While examining a patient for neck pain, the clinician notes unusual swelling of the anterior neck with symptoms of hoarseness, dysphagia, and tenderness. Additionally, the patient reports increased sensitivity to heat and weight loss despite increased appetite. Exophthalmos is also noted. Which of the following conditions is most likely present? So again, we've got, while examining a patient for neck pain, the clinician notes unusual swelling of the anterior neck with symptoms of hoarseness, dysphagia, and tenderness. Additionally, the patient reports increased sensitivity to heat and weight loss despite increased appetite. Uh, exophthalmos is also noted. Which of the following conditions is most likely present? Option one, acromegaly. Two, diabetes insipidus. Three, hyperparathyroidism. Four, hyperthyroidism. So we've got acromegaly, diabetes insipidus, hyperparathyroidism, and hyperthyroidism. All right, so this question it really tests you on the metabolic and endocrine system, specifically endocrine. As we talk through this one, you'll note that these are the symptoms that are quite consistent with hyperthyroidism. So as you see in this, in, this, uh, in this question, the patient has neck pain, but they've got anterior neck symptoms, including hoarseness, dysphagia, tenderness, uh, all of this in addition to heat insensitivity, or sorry, heat, <laughs> increased heat sensitivity, so they get hot too easy, and weight loss despite an increased appetite. And then finally, the real kicker there is the exophthalmos or the, or the bulged out eyes. All of that leads you towards hyperthyroidism. So hyperthyroidism, again, I like to think of the thyroid hormones as being, so we're talking about levothyrox, well, yeah, all of the, the thyroid hormones and levothyroxine as the, as the uh, synthetic version of that, that uh, this is like the metabolic gas pedal or the engine. So as you increase or increase thyroid hormone levels, you are increasing the RPM or increasing the speed of your metabolic engine. And so you would expect that heat intolerance and weight loss. Uh, additionally, you'll also see some what they call mild go goiter, kind of a fun word to say, mild goiter, where you have an enlargement of the thyroid glands as they're producing more of that thyroid hormone. So all this leads us towards hyperthyroidism, uh, where they have that weight, that weight loss and heat, insensitivity, heat sensitivity 
in addition to the exophthalmos, the symmetric goiter, as well as hoarseness, dysphagia, and unusual neck swelling. All of that's hyperthyroidism. These other options that are incorrect include acromegaly. So acromegaly, this is a hyperpituitarism. Uh, this is typically where you have too much growth hormone, but it's a gradual onset, and they develop the, the abnormal skeletal growth or abnormal abnormal bony growth, especially in the face, jaws, and long bone, the face and jaw and long bones. So they get these significantly thickened facial features as well as spade-like fingers. Um, so this is one of the, the hallmark characteristics of acromegaly. Diabetes insipidus, this is where you have a water imbalance. This is where the antidiuretic hormone, you have insufficient ADH. And so therefore, if you're not antidiuresing, that means you are diuresing a lot which means you get lots of large, uh, so large quantities, the production of large quantities of dilute urine. And then finally, hyperparathyroidism. So parathyroid, I like to think of the parathyroid gland or the parathyroid hormone as being the, the primary calcium mediator for the bloodstream. And so hyperparathyroidism increases the calcium concentration. And then the question is, okay, where does that calcium come from? Well, it comes from the bones. So it causes significant bone resorption leading to hypercalcemia, bone damage. And then additionally, there's a whole whole list of, of signs and symptoms associated with this. But among them would include lethargy, drowsiness, slow mentation, muscular atrophy, hyper reflexivity. All these things would be related to excess calcium in the blood as resultant, uh, resultant from hyperparathyroidism. So again, the connection in my mind is parathyroid with calcium and then hyper with the thyroid hormone. I like to consider that the metabolic engine. And so the faster that metabolic engine is going, the more thyroid hormone there is, it leads to that heat intolerance and weight loss. So there you go. There is the metabolic and endocrine system differential diagnosis. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got over here on the NPT podcast. And also, if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review. It only takes a sec. Uh, all you have to do, you know, just on whatever device you're listening on, just go ahead and hit, hit that five-star. It really helps as we're trying to get the word out, uh, get more people involved and interested in the NPT podcast. So it always helps a ton. Uh, as always, happy studying. I know that you've got a lot on your plate. Uh, so Will Crane fist pumps all around. We'll catch you all in the next episode. Talk to you soon. Have a fabulous day. And uh, yeah, Will Crane fist pumps. Thank <laughs> you.